I'm grateful today that I can share. This is a ladies Sunday. Nafurahia leo ya kwamba tunaweza shiriki naweza shiriki ni uh, Jumapili ya wadada. And I know the Lord has something for you and for me. Najua kwamba Mungu ako na kitu kwa sababu yako na yangu. And so we are just going to share briefly and to just experience God's presence with us. Tutaweza kushiriki kwa uchache alafu tukaweze kuhisi ama kupata uh, uwepo wa Mungu nasi. I'm sure several ladies present have been attending our conference. And I know that the Lord has spoken to us. And we shall continue to water that soil, that crop. And it will grow and bear much fruit. Because God does not bring his word in vain. I also want to thank God for my family. I'm blessed with three sons. One daughter. A daughter-in-law. It was glow and uh, three grandsons. Uh huh. Na? A daughter in law. Oh. Ha. <laughs> huh. The man in Liskia Kama, the Mstana and I to a glow. Ah, a daughter in law, yao. And uh, three grandsons. Napia, a uh, Vijana, Wajuku, Watatu. I, I bless God for that. Nanashkuru Mungu kwa sababu ya iyo. And, and I'm grateful that I'm able to minister to te, today. Nanashkuru kwa sababu naweza kuhudumu leo. Because God appointed me for a time like this. Kwa sababu Mungu kanichagua kwa wakati kama huu. So today we are going to look at uh, a topic empowered to live my purpose. Aha, tutaangalia uh, mada ambayo inasema kuwekwa nguvu kuishi makusudi yangu. Empowered to live my purpose. Kuwekwa nguvu kuishi makusudi yangu. And we'll start off by reading our verse our theme verses Isaiah 41 14 to 16. Isaiah 41:14-16. If it can be projected please. Ikiweza kuwekwa pale ndio ile. So we'll read together. Tusoma kwa pamoja kwa kizungu. And uh, our Kiswahili followers will follow. Alafu wale ambao wa Kiswahili tutaweza kufuatilia pia. But those of us who can read English because we went to school and our parents paid fees so we can read some English, isn't it? Tusoma Kiingereza kidogo. So let's go even in the tent. Overflow just let's go together. Tunde kwa pamoja. Fear, Fear not, thou, thou Jacob, Jacob, and ye men, men of, of Israel. Israel. I will, will help, help you, says, says the Lord, thy Redeemer, Redeemer, the Holy, Holy One, One of Israel. Israel. Behold, I will I'll make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, instrument having teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and, and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt find them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. That is uh, our, those, those are the verses that we are carrying through this year. And we just want to base our message on that. In terms of us being empowered for our purpose. God has a purpose for you and for me. So what is the meaning of empowered? What is the meaning of empowered? When you look in the dictionary, the meaning of the word empowered, it just says to make someone stronger, more confident, especially in controlling their life and claiming their rights. Uh, 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 ma, their rights. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Or it is give someone the authority 
uwezo to do something kufanya kitu so being empowered as we look at it in our church this time kwa hivyo kuwezeshwa tunapoangalia katika kanisa letu wakati huu it just means we are being made stronger to be able to fulfill the purpose for which God created us. Inamaanisha kuweza kupewa mkutiwa nguvu kuweza kufikilia malengo ambayo Mungu alitumia. To be confident to be confident in what we are doing. Ya kile ambacho tuwafanya. And we have been given the authority. Na tumeweza kupatiwa uwezo ule to do it. Kufanya vile. And and so as we go through this uh, sharing we, we are just looking at how are we empowered tunatazamia je tumewezeshwa vipi to be able to fulfill our purpose kufikisha malengo zetu and uh, i know god has a plan for you in this congregation najua kwamba mungu ako na makusudi yako ako na mipango yako wewe kilioko hapa and also for our online viewers wherever you are god has a plan and a purpose na hata wale wote ambao wanafuatilia kwenye mitambo wote mungu ako na makusudi to fulfill that purpose you Weza must kuhakikisha kwamba makusudi ile imetimia you must be empowered lazima uwe na nguvu ama uwezeshwe then what is the purpose kwa hivyo ni, ni, ni nini makusudi what is the meaning of purpose aha makusudi ni nini maana yake It just means when you look at the dictionary there are many whatever but I've just chosen one or two the Aha. reason for which Aha sababu ya something is done or created Kitu kinafanyika ama kina, kiliungwa or for which something exists Ama uh, ke, kwa nini kitu kinaishi ama kipo So why do you exist Mbona unaishi mbona wewe uko or another definition says the intention aha ingine inasema ma, uh, uh, makusudi aim or function of something sababu uh, 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 ama, ama utendakazi wa kitu or the reason why or the you know the thing that something is going to achieve ama sababu ya kitu kinaenda kufikilisha what nini what is it supposed to achieve kinafaa kufikia nini ama kutenda nini so you are created for something kwa hivyo basi umeumbwa kwa sababu ya kitu. And so when we are looking at empowered for purpose. Na kwa hivyo tukiangalia kuhusu kuweza kuwezeshwa kwa makusudi fulani. This means for us to be able to move in the power and in the authority God has given us. Inamaanisha kwenda kuweza kutembea katika nguvu ambazo Mungu ametupea to be able to achieve what he created us for ili tukaweze kufikilia kile ambacho alitumba kwa sababu yake Jeremiah 29:11 Jeremiah 29:11 we can read together tusome kwa pamoja kwa kimombo for i know the thoughts that i think toward you says the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end You know that is what God is telling us. He knows the thoughts that he thinks to others. Anatuambia anajua mawazo anayotuazia. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Mawazo ya amani na si ya mabaya. Uh, another version says that I know the plans he has for us. Na kingine inasema ya kwamba ninajua anajua mipango aliyonayo kwetu. I think let's read this one. For I know the plans I have. Let's go together. For, for I know, know the plans I have for you. This, this is, is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your welfare and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. So God has a plan for you. Ivo basi Mungu ako na makusudi kwako. God has a plan for your life. Ako na makusudi kwa maisha yako. He has a plan for me. Ako na mipango kwangu and he has a plan for you. Na pia ako na mipango kwako. And it's just good to ask. Ni vema kuuliza what is your purpose for existing? Makusudi yako ya kuishi ni nini? Why do you exist? Mbona unaishi? Why? Kwa nini? Do you know your purpose? Je, unajua makusudi yako? Why you exist? Mbona unaishi? It's just good to ask yourself because knowing that now helps you be able to go forward in fulfilling it. Ni vizuri kujua kwa nini kwa sababu itakusaidia ukaweze kwenda mbele ili kutimiliza. 
So your purpose generally it just keeps unfolding. Aha, makusudi yako inaendelea kujifungua as you grow in the Lord. Unapoendelea kukua kwa Bwana and get a revelation of God. Na unapata ufunuo wa Bwana. What you have through Jesus Christ. Ile ambayo wako nayo kupitia Yesu Kristo. And he will enable you by the Holy Spirit. Na kwa kupitia Roho Mtakatifu atakuwezesha to be able to know what you are created for. Ili kwamba ujue ni kwa nini uliweza kuumbwa. And it is a growing revelation relation nani ufunuo ambao unakuwa because as you grow in the lord you are able to tell this is what i should do at this time kwa sababu unapoendelea kukua kwa Mungu unajua hivi ndivyo nafaa kufanya wakati fulani because jesus redeemed you by his precious blood kwa sababu alikukomboa Yesu kwa kupitia damu yake damu yake itakatifu able to fulfill Purpose. Ili kwamba ukaweze kuweza kutimiliza uh, makusudi. And your purpose is connected to other people. Na makusudi yako imeunganishwa na watu wengine. It's connected to your family. Unganishwa na familia yako. Your children. Unganishwa na watoto wako. Your parents. Unganishwa na wazazi. Your relatives. Unganishwa na wale mliozaliwa nao, mnaitanishwa nao. Your spouse if you are married. Mke wako kama umeolewa. Your neighbors. Na uh, wa, wa, wale majirani your wako. Workmates. Wale ambao mwafanya kazi na and your local church na hata kanisa yako so it's connected to others the purpose you exist is not just for yourself kwa hivyo maksudi yako ya kuishi sio tu kwa wewe mwenyewe bali inaunganishwa na watu wengine it is not just for me sio tu kwangu it is for me for my family kwangu familia yangu the extended family wale ambao ni wale familia ambayo naendelea to fulfill a plan and a purpose in their lives. Uko pale kuweza kutimiliza makusudi na mipangilio katika maisha yao. And your spiritual purpose ha, na makusudi yako ya kiroho is connected to the vision and mission of your local church. Inaunganishwa uh, na, mal, na lengo la kanisa yako ambao unashiriki. So what is your local church? Kwa hivyo kanisa yako ni gani? If this is your local church, kama hii ndio kanisa yako ambayo unashiriki, then your purpose is connected in the with the purpose, the vision, the mission of this church. Kwa hivyo, aha, maksudi yako inaunganishwa na maksudi na malengo ya kanisa hili. So what is your purpose? Hivyo basi maksudi yako ni gani? Do you for example participate fully in the in our local church? Je, je unahusika vipasavyo katika kanisa yako? Or you just walk in and out? Ama wewe ni wa kuingia na kutoka? If you belong you participate in a local church. Unahusika unashughulika una katika kanisa yako? So your purpose is connected to others. Kwa hivyo maksudi yako inaunganishwa na wengine. So wing. what are you doing in terms of bettering other people's lives around you? Hivyo basi unafanya nini kuweza kusababisha maisha, maisha ya watu yakaweze kuwa mazuri walioko karibu na wewe? So are you able to clarify your purpose? What is it? Je, unaweza kuweza kuangazia uh, maksudi yako ni nini? You know me I can't tell you your purpose because Mimi, your purpose <laughs> is for you as an individual. Mimi siwezi kukwambia maksudi yako kwa sababu ni yako wewe kama uh, kibinafsi. And sometimes when you look at it okay my purpose you know what you are supposed to do. Sometimes you feel like maybe I'm not I'm failing in so many areas. Wakati mwingine pengine unaangalia malengo yako ama vile unavyopaswa kufanya alafu unaona unakosea kwa njia kadhaa. You see that okay you keep your vows you you say I'm going to do this you don't do it. Pengine unasema nitafanya hivi lakini unakosa kufanya. Or you just fail you know in living the christian life that you think you should live ama tu unashindwa kuishi maisha ya kikristo ambao unadhania ungeishi what we should know is that none of us is perfect kile ambacho unafaa kujua ni kwamba hakuna aliyekamilika kamilifu god just works with ordinary men and women like me and you mungu anafanya kazi na watu wa kawaida kama mimi na wewe who decide to follow god ambao wanaamua kumfuata mungu in spite of their human weaknesses ajalishi walikukosefu wao wa kibinadamu so you should not feel like okay if you have failed here you have done this wrong that now god is displeased with you kwa hivyo hauangaliki kwamba nimekosea hapa nimefanya hivi mungu amekasirishwa na mimi 
God loves you. Anakupenda Mungu. And he wants to you to fulfill his purpose. Na anataka ukaweze kutimilisha makusudi yake. And he will help you do it. Na atakusaidia kufanya. So the spirit of uh, feeling guilty, shame should not be our portion. Kwa hivyo ile hali ama roho wa kudhihakiwa ama kuhukumiwa na kuona aibu haiwezi haifai kuwa Ayeti. God just uses imperfect people like you and me. Mungu anatumia watu walio wasiokuwa wamekamilika kama wewe na mimi. There are no perfect people in the universe. Hakuna watu walio wakamilifu hapa duniani. So just do the best you know how you fail, you wake up and you continue. So unaendelea, unaanguka, unakosa kutimiliza lakini unainuka na unaendelea. Now when we read the first verse we read it says do not fear. Andiko la kwanza tulilosoma likasema usiogope. Why should you not fear? Kwa nini usiogope? Because there will be challenging seasons, challenging moments in our lives. Kwa sababu panazo siku za changamoto katika maisha yetu. There's nobody on this universe who doesn't go through challenges. Hakuna yeyote ambaye anakosa kupitia changamoto. But the Lord is telling us don't fear. Lakini Bwana Mungu anatuambia usiogope. Go forth to fulfill the purpose for which he created you. Endelea ukatimilize makusudi ambayo alikuitia ama alikuumbia. He has a plan for your life. Ako na makusudi, ako na malengo juu ya maisha yako. So even when things become challenging, still focus on going ahead. Hivyo basi hata wakati mambo yanakuwa na changamoto, endelea kufuatilia ukaweze kwenda mbele. And don't waste your pain. Na usikaweze kupotezea uchungu wako nafasi. When you are going through difficult moments, unapopitia wakati mgumu, it's painful. Endelea kuwa mwaminifu, but you should not waste your pain. Lakini usikaweze kupoteza uchungu ule. Focus on who has called you. Angaliz, angazia yule aliyekuita. Maybe I can just talk of a few examples in the word of God. Niongee kuhusu uh, watu kadhaa ama uh, 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 mifano kadhaa katika neno la Mungu. When we look at the apostle Paul. Tukimwangazia mtume Paulo. He wrote most of the New Testament. Aliandika andiko agano jipya maandiko mengi katika agano jipya. And he wrote it while he was in jail. Na aliandika akiwa amefungwa. And he was telling us rejoice. Na alikuwa anasema furahieni. He was encouraging us to walk the walk of faith. Alikuwa anasema tutembee katika safari ya imani. To trust God. Tumwaminie Mungu. So when you look at the epistles, ukiangalia uh, uh, maandiko yale aliandika ama barua, Paul was not writing them when he was on his holiday. Aha Paulo hakuwa anaandika kama ako kwa kujivinjari. He was in jail. Alikuwa amefungwa. He was under very difficult circumstances. Hali ilikuwa ngumu sana. But he said he was pouring out his Lakini life. Lakini alikuwa anamwaga maisha. And he was saying press on. Anasema endeleeni. Forget the past. Ukisahau yaliyopita. Press on. Muendelee. So during challenging moments it doesn't mean now you put down the you know you stop what you are meant to do. Wakati wa changamoto haimaanishi sasa ukose kuendelea na yale unayofaa fanya. You just go on. Endelea. Then another one is um, also like Paul in Acts 26. Matendo ya mitume 26. When God gave, gave yeah, thank you. Let's read that one. Tusome kwa pamoja. Agrippa said to Paul, it is permitted for you, you to, speak to speak for, for yourself. yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and, and began his defense. Continue. I, I consider myself fortunate, King Agrippa, that today I'm going to make a defense before you about everything I am accused of by the Jews, especially since you are an expert in all the Jewish customs and controversies. Therefore, Therefore I, I beg you to listen to me patiently. All the Jews know my way of life from my youth, which was spent from the beginning among my own nation and in Jerusalem. They had previously known me for quite some time, if they were willing to testify that according to the strictest party of our religion, I lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand on trial for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. 
the promise our 12 tribes hope to attain as they earnestly serve him night and day. Because of this, I'm, I'm being accused by the Jews, O king. Let's stop there. You can read the whole of it. Now, Paul had appeared before the king. And, and before he appeared, God had told him, you'll appear to defend me before great men. So when you go through this difficult moments, you still have to have the testimony of Jesus. Yes. Simply because you are in a problem doesn't mean you can't tell people God loves them. Because God's word does not change. And God will help you. First Peter 5, 10. Now, let's go together. Today we are all reading. Sawa. Even in the tent. Hata kwenye hema tusome pamoja. And overflow. Please. Na wale ambao walioko pale nje. Now the God of all grace who, who called you to his eternal, eternal glory in Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus will personally restore, establish, strengthen and support you after you have suffered a little. So the, the Bible here Peter is telling us that, that after we have suffered a little while God will strengthen us. He will give us he will enable us to go on. He will restore us. So our purpose even when things are tough we still press on. Because he's telling us it's just for a little while. It's not, it's not permanent. And he will restore us. And he will make us strong. Then also take personal responsibility for your life. Just no, God has called you. The challenge has come. You have to go through it as you pursue your purpose. Aha, ya kwamba Mungu anakujua ndio kuna changamoto lakini unaendelea ukifuatiliza makusudi yako. Psalms 103 verses 1 to 3. Zaburi 103 moja hadi 3. Bless the Lord. Let's go. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. In other words, even when you are going through difficult moments, have a grateful heart. Be thankful. There are so many things God has done for us. When you look at your life, you can see the blessings. He has blessed us. We have gone through difficult moments, but the We have gone through difficult moments, but the presence of God remains real. So, even when we are going through difficult moments, we should not be afraid. We should not fear. God is with us. They say this uh, around 365 fear notes in the Bible. So, it's important that we know that God wants us not to fear each day of our life. And uh, we will also look at uh, um, Job 23. The fact that God himself will help you. Let's read again Isaiah 41 verses uh, 14 towards the end. Fear not thou O Jacob and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, says the Lord, and the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. God himself says, I will help you. I will help you. He will not leave you. 
God's anointing will give you and me victory. Upako wa Mungu utakupatia ushindi mpya. Over the challenges that come our way. Zaidi ya changamoto zinazokuja mbele yako. And God's anointing na upako wa Mungu will empower us itakutia nguvu to move through those difficult moments. Kuweza kusonga zaidi ya machida zile ama changamoto zile. To be able to fulfill our destiny. Utaweza kutimiliza makusudi ama malengo yako. For yourself yako for your family familia yako for your you know the people that god brings you away wala mungu watu mungu ameleta mbele yako and he will do so by give, by enabling us with his holy spirit na atafanya hivyo kwa kuwezesha kupitia roho yake mtakatifu galatians 5:16 to 26 wa galatia 5:16 hadi 26 but we'll just look um, yeah let's see acha tuangalie how far we shall go mali ambapo tutaenda Can we read together? Tusome kwa pamoja. Even in the overflow. Hata wale ambao wako pale mbubujikoni. Even in the tent. Wale walio kwenye hema. This I say then. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would but ye be led by the spirit ye are under the, the law now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred Various emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Let's But, let's stop there first. Wacha kwanza tutulie pale. Now those verses tell us the things which are of the flesh. Maandiko pale inatuelezea mambo ambayo ni ya kimwili. And those who thinks will not help us inherit the kingdom of God. Na mambo yale hayatatuwezesha ku uh, kufikilia ama kuweza kumiliki They will not help us to fulfill our purpose. Hayatatusaidia kutimiliza makusudi yetu the things of the flesh mambo ya kimwili the feelings yale yani tamaa ama hisia and the bible tells us those things will not help us biblia inatuambia mambo yale hayatatusaidia so just look at yourself how many of those things we have read Nima, are you living in ni mambo ngapi ya yale ambayo tumesoma ujiwazie unaishi ndani yake you know even when things are difficult you don't go by strife envy anger you know hatred all those things you cannot say that okay you know so and so did this so i had to do the same hata wakati mambo ni magumu kiasi kipi hauwezi ukafanya mambo yale ukisema ah mtu fulani na yule alinifanyia hivi kwa hivyo nitafanya Let's continue the next verse. Hapo tuendelee pale mbele. The other verses the spirit. Aha, tuendelee pale mbele. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Now they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So really what is telling us is we have to choose to walk in the spirit. We have to choose to believe God. Yaani maandiko yanatuambia lazima tuamue kutembea kwa roho na tuamue kumwaminia Mungu. And the spirit of God will help us. Na roho mtakatifu wa Mungu atatusaidia. He will help us to pray appropriately. Atatusaidia kuweza kuomba vipasavyo. He will also help us to overcome our weakness. Na atatusaidia kuweza kushinda udhaifu wetu. The Holy Spirit will also help us to understand the scriptures. Na pia atatusaidia kuelewa maandiko. 
So if you are here and you are, you are saved, Kama uko hapa na when you are saved, you receive the Spirit of God. Ukiokoka, unapata roho wa Mungu. But you have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So that you can be able to flow Ili in the uka, Spirit of God. Roho wa Mungu. Receiving the Holy Spirit at, at when you get saved, Ukipata roho mtakatifu wakati umeokoka is just like um, is like when you get for example if there, there there's water in a glass ni mfano tu kama kuna maji kwenye glasi but now when you are filled baptized in the holy spirit ya kwamba sasa ukijazwa na kubatizwa na roho mtakatifu is like if that glass now is put in an ocean or in the lake ya kwamba sasa kikombe kile ama glasi ile ikiwekwa kwenye maji mengi so you are filled and you are able to move kwa hivyo unajazwa na unaweza kuendelea so we are told god will help us ya kwamba mungu atatusaidia tunaambiwa he will help us by the holy spirit ana tusaidia kwa roho mtakatifu to be able to fulfill the purpose for which he created you and me ili kwamba ukaweza kutimiliza makusudi ambayo alikugumbia wewe na mimi and then it is telling us the same verses are telling us that we shall be read as portray isaiah 41:15 tuweke isaiah 41:15 Behold I'll make, make thee you a new, new sharp threshing instrument having, having teeth thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and, and you may make the hills as chaff In other words I just want to look at a new sharp threshing sledge Ya kwamba ukiwa mkali umenolewa unaweza kata For you to be sharp ili kwamba uwe umenolewa ama ukue mkali there are few things you must do lazima kuna mambo ambayo unafaa ufanye you must trust god based on his word muaminie mungu kwa neno lake you just must believe god's word lazima umuaminie mungu kwa neno lake what the word says about the issues that you face as you fulfill your purpose neno linasema nini kuhusiana na mambo ambayo unapitia unapoangazia malengo yako And, and, and so you just believe the word of god kwa hivyo unaamini tu neno la mungu trust what the word of god says unaamini neno la mungu lasema nini then to focus on god and his promises over your life kwa hivyo ukaweze kutazamia mungu na ahadi zake juu ya maisha yako you have to believe what god says about you lazima uamini mungu anasema nini kukuhusu wewe For example, kwa mfano, if you are sick, kama wewe ni mgonjwa, you have to believe that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed. Lazima uamini kwamba kupitia kwa It, it doesn't matter, the word of God must be priority. Haijalishi neno la Mungu lazima liwe uh, la kwanza. Because that Sab- is what is the truth. Sababu hiyo ndiyo ukweli. And that promise you pick it and walk with it. Kwamba hadi ile unaishika na unatembea nayo. Are your relatives, your family members and well? Aha, na wale watu we, watu wenyu je wako sawa? We believe by the stripes of Jesus they were healed. Ya kwamba tunaamini kwa mijeledi ya Yesu wamepona. So we believe what the Lord tells us. Kwa basi tunaamini kile Mungu anatuambia. And uh, you know the promises what Jesus died to give us on the cross is ours. Ya kwamba yale ile Yesu alitupatia alipokufa msalabani ni yetu. If you are saved it belongs to you. Kama umeokoka ni yako. So all God's promises he was made poor that we become rich. Ya kwamba ahadi za Mungu Yesu aliweza kufanyika maskini ili tukaweze kukua tajiri. Are you lacking? Je unakosa? You have to believe what God says. Amini Mungu anasema nini? In Revelation 12:11 Ufunuo 12:11 11, The Bible says Bila inasema And they overcame him by the blood of the la- hey, We are together Tunasoma oh. pamoja Let's go And they, and they overcame, overcame him by, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death. death They overcame him by the blood of the lamb the blood of Jesus kwa damu ya Yesu and 
the word of their testimony the neno la ushuhuda wao the word of the testimony neno la ushuhuda just means inamaanisha that they were testifying ya kwamba waliweza kushuhudia of what the word of god says neno la mungu la semani what the blood of jesus has done for them na kile ambacho damu ya yesu kimefanya kwa sababu yao that's why when you read biographies of the, of the early christians ndio maana ukisoma hadithi za wale wa kristo wa kwanza they were murdered just for believing what Wal- the word says waliuawa kwa kuamini neno linasema nini they stood on the word walisimama kwenye neno and so for us we have also to believe the word and stand on the word hivyo basi hata sisi lazima tuamini neno na tusimame kwenye hilo neno we must confess what that word says about us tuweze kukiri bile bile neno hilo linasema kutuhusu that we are the head and not the tail ya kwamba sisi ni vichwa bali sio mkia and so we shall go forth and conquer as we pursue our purpose na hivyo basi tutaweza kuendelea mbele tukishinda na kufuatilizia makusudi yetu you know those promises are for you and me unajua ahadi zile ni zako na zangu imagine the devil believes that actually those are your promises na unajua shetani anaamini kwamba hizo ni ahadi zako It is so sad if you don't believe. Ina uzunisha sana kama wewe mwenyewe hauamini. And you have to believe whether you see it or not. You may be in pain, but you have to believe by the stripes of Jesus I was healed. Na unalafaa kuamini hata kama unaona ama hauoni, hata kama uko kwa uchungu ya kwamba kwa kupitia micheledi ya Yesu ulipona. So we have to believe the word of God. Hivyo basi lazima uamini neno la Mungu. And confess it. Na ukalikiri. What we confess we Kile possess. Tunachokiri tuna tunamiliki. So we have to pos- uh, proclaim the word of God. Hivyo basi lazima tukaweze kutangaza neno la Mungu. Now there are two kinds of knowledge. Aha, kuna maarifa mara mbili. There's the sense knowledge. Kuna ile maarifa ya kuwazia ama kufikiria tu like what we study in school in Netflix college so shuleni, the professions we take um, kazi ambazo tunafanya you know those are they are related to the senses what we see what we feel what we touch ni mtazamo tunayaona nini tunashika nini tunagusa nini but for us to move and fulfill our purpose. Lakini ili tukaweze kuendelea na kutimiliza makusudi yetu. We must move beyond the sense knowledge. Lazima tuende zaidi ya maarifa ile ya kufunzwa. So we have to go by revelation knowledge. Lazima tuende na maarifa ya ufunuo. So for you to be a threshing sledge. Ili kwamba ukaweze kuwa unaweza kata, you must be able to walk in revelation knowledge. Lazima ukaweze kutembea katika uh, uh, maarifa based on the word of, based on the word of God. Ambayo ambayo ina, inalingana ama inaambatana na neno la Mungu. Now the word of God was written uh, the Old Testament was written to the Israelites. Basically, aha aha agano la kale likawa limeandikwa na wana wa Israeli to the Israelites oh ikawa likawa limeandikiwa wana wa Israeli in the new testament na nalo agano jipya when you look at the epistles aha ukiangalia uh, ba, barua they were written to the churches iliandikiwa makanisa they were written to they were not written to peter kuandikiwa petero it was not written to peter john Elizabeth kuandikiwa Petero Yohana Elizabeth it was written to the churches when you read the epistles were addressed to the churches aha barua zile ziliweza kuandikiwa kanisa it was not written to individuals kuandikiwa watu so we are able as individuals to be able to get the word of god through those verses na kupitia maandiko yale kama binafsi tunapata neno la mungu but to be a threshing sledge lakini ili uwe una uwezo wa kukata to fulfill your purpose kuweza kutimiliza makusudi yako you must be a member of an active local church lazima ukahusike katika kanisa because your purpose is connected to the vision and mission of your local church kwa sababu makusudi yako imeunganishwa na malengo na mwelekeo wa kanisa so you have to be an active participant 
participant in the local church to fulfill your purpose. Kwa hivyo lazima ukaweze kuwa unahusika katika kanisa lako ili utimilize ma, ma, malengo. You can attend many conferences, many workshops. Weza enda kongamano nyingi mahali ambapo unafunzwa. But that does not help you to fulfill the entire purpose of your life. Lakini haitakusaidia kutimiliza makusudi yako katika maisha. And it's important to attend those conferences they have a purpose they have their part in our spiritual growth. Makongamano hayo ni sawa kuenda lakini yako na sababu yako na ndio yako na mahali ambapo inahusika katika kuwa kwetu. But for you to grant fulfill your purpose. Lakini ili ukaweze kutimiliza makusudi yako you must be strongly linked to a local church. Lazima ukaweze kuwa unahusika ama uko na uhusiano na kanisa. So if you belong to this church of ours. Kama wewe ni wa hii kanisa, do you belong to the cell? Wewe uko kwa nye kanisa la ndogo la nyumbani? Are you an active member of the cell? Je, unahusika katika kanisa dogo la nyumbani? Are you an active member of the men's groups? Je, unahusika katika vikundi vya wazee? Are you an active member of the ladies groups? Unahusika katika vikundi vya wanadada? Where do you serve? Wewe una una hudumu wapi? Have you gone through the father's vision? Je, umeenda katika vision ya baba? Or are you in the process? Ama wewe pengine ndio unaanza. You must be, if you want to blossom in your purpose. Kama unataka ukaweze ku, uh, kuendelea katika makusudi yako. You just have to belong. Ni lazima usike. And be active in the local church. Usike katika kanisa lako that will help you fulfill your purpose. Na hiyo itakusaidia kuweza kutimiliza makusudi yako. have grown in this church. Nimekuwa katika kanisa hili and I'm able to do what I'm doing because I've been planted in this church. Nafanya vile ninavyoweza kufanya kwa sababu nimepandwa katika kanisa hili. If you go to now if I live like now and I go to another church. Nikitoka niende mengine kanisa lingine. It will take so long for me to be known. To know, know what I'm able to do. Kujulikana kujua nitafanya nini. You have to be planted. Lazima upandwe. You cannot be a potted plant. Wewe uwezi kuwa mmea ambao umetolewa. Because when a plant is planted, it's uprooted to be taken somewhere else. It will take time to grow. Kwa sababu ukiweza kungoa kutoa mmea ambao unakuwa alafu upeleke mahali pengine uweze kukua utachukua muda. So be planted in your, in this church. And our online viewers be planted in your local church. Then what mountains do we face as we pursue our our vision or our purpose? Mountains we fa- maybe just bring the verse which talks of mountains in Isaiah 421 Isaiah 41 utuletee andiko ambalo linaongea kuhusu milima Behold I will make, make thee, thee a new sharp threshing, threshing instrument having, having teeth thou, thou shalt, shalt thresh, thresh the mountains, mountains and beat them small and, and shall, shall make, make the hills, hills as a chaff. So we are talking of the mountains, those mountains and the hills. So what are the mountains? Ma- mountains are just the hardships, the pains, and the difficult experiences we go through. Milima ni uchungu, ni hali ngumu ambayo tunapitia. The storms of life yani zile mawimbi za maisha. And there are two kinds of storms. Na panayo mawimbi mara mbili there are storms kuna mawimbi related to sense knowledge ambayo inahusiana na ujuzi wa kupata and there are storms na kuna na, now this uh, this uh, sto- storms related to the sense knowledge ambazo zinahusiana na maarifa tu ya, ku, ya, ya kuhisi ama kuona there are se- there are things that we can correct ni mambo ambayo tunaweza tengeza um, there, there are things for example like the storms that we contribute to yani yale ile mawimbi ambayo tunahusika kuchangia Hosea 4:6 says my people perish for lack of knowledge Sene sita watu wangu wanaangamia kwa kukosa maarifa So there are some difficult situations we face because we don't have the right knowledge Kuna mambo magumu sasa zingine ambayo tunapitia kwa sababu hatuna maarifa ile ambayo ni sawa Let's read uh, Hosea 4:6. Hosea uh, tusome Hosea 4:6. Uh, 
My, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that you have forgotten the law of the God, and I will also forget the children. So my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Some problems we have contributed. And you have to analyze and see, have I contributed to this problem? And you can contribute knowingly or unknowingly. So now, these storms, those storms, Aha, just, uh, just try to see what, uh, do you have difficulties that you think you have contributed to? Just identify. Once you have identified, God will help you solve them. For example, if you are having financial challenges, and this time and age, are you, for example, you are earning 20,000 shillings, and then your house rent is 15,000. Surely you cannot survive on 5,000 to pay for the house if you pay for the house 15 then 5 you have to to take care of your children all that then by that time so some problems may be because of just lack of knowledge on what you should do. Because God did not create you to suffer. He doesn't want you to be tormented. So find out and you can correct it. Are you working? Are you actively employed? Because God only blesses the works of our hands. If you are not working, there's no way God will bless the Hakuna vile Mungu atabariki kazi ya mikono yako. Do you have you got uh, you know do you invest do you save do you invest? Je, unawekeza? Una we, una, una, unawekeza? In Deuteronomy 28 it says he'll bless the, your storehouse. Ya kwamba Biblia inasema katika matendo ya mitume atabariki nyumba ya kuweka kwako. So if you have no investment there's nothing God can do because Hauwe, there's no storehouse. Hauwekezi, hakuna kitu ambacho Mungu atabariki. So find out, is there, is, am I facing this problem because of lack of knowledge? Yeah. And, and you can look in many areas. What problems are you facing? List them. And see, am I contributing? And then you can see how God can help you sort them out. But there are also storms in the spiritual realm. These are, these are the devil's schemes against us. Which wants to deter us or distract us from reaching our destiny. So you cannot reach our purpose. So you also have to identify hey, these challenges, these are not normal challenges. So they are spiritual. You may have sicknesses in the family. Mental emotional, physical, and they are not getting healed. You are, you are struggling through them. There may be also financial problems where you see, ah, these ones are just not normal. Relationship problems. And, and many other problems. So you have to identify, is this problem 
spiritual Put on the whole arm of God that you that may, you may be, able be able to stand, stand against the wiles of the devil. devil. 12. For, For we wrestle, wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, against principalities, against, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So identify the difficulties you are facing. Then those ones which you know is because of your lack of knowledge. You know you can ask God to help you. You will learn. He will give you destiny help us to help you achieve whatever. Mungu atakusaidia, utaomba, atakusaidia na kuunganisha na watu ambao atakusaidia. But if the problems are the devil's schemes, then you know you are not wrestling flesh and blood. It's not the people. If you are having poor relationships, it's not the people. Or if you are having some challenges, you, you should... It's only you who can identify them for yourself. Tu kuziangazia, so once you identify now, you know that we have an enemy. Kuzitambua, and this enemy is the devil. Na uyu adui, ni so, and when he'll be at us. Na akiwa anatuandama. So we have to be ready to fight. We are in a fist spiritual warfare. And so we must get God's promises on rela related to the issue at hand. And then use our spiritual weapons. So that we fulfill our purpose. Let's look at Galatians 3.13 to 14. Christ, let's read together please. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. That the, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, Galatians 3.13 tells us that Jesus Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. All the pains we go through. When you want to look at those pains, difficult situations that we go through, you read... Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 68. Please write that. We shall not read it. Ishirina nine, 28, 15 to 68. Just read that to know all the curses, all the pains that Jesus Christ redeemed us from. Ukasome yote ukaweze kuona so those difficult things that Jesus redeemed us from, then we just stand on the word and say, he redeemed me from this, it does no longer exist in my life. We have to confess, what we confess, confess we possess and believe what the word of God says. The blessings that he talk about yes. Deuteronomy 28 1 to 14 Those are the blessings God gave us. And so we just stand on the word of God, confess 
and receive what he died to give us. He's our healer. By the stripes of Jesus we were healed. Are you facing healing challenges? By his stripes you are healed. Maybe it's your or your family members. So we declare that he we are the healed. I will receive that healing in Jesus' name. Are you lacking? Is Jehovah Jire our provider? So we confess what the word of God says about the situation. And victory becomes ours. I, I, I remember I've had challenges of health in my family. And just standing on the word of God. I've seen God move. God deliver. God heal. So let's stand on God's word. It may be so difficult. But if he says he's the healer, he heals our minds, our emotions, and our physical diseases. Jesus paid for it on the cross. And we receive it for ourselves and our family members. And any other problem, Maybe poor relationships. God restores relationships. Mungu anarejesha uhusiano. The word of God. Aha, neno la Mungu. And we receive it for ourselves. Na tunapokea kwa sababu yetu. Because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Kwa sababu tunashinda kwa damu ya Yesu na shuhuda ya vinywa vyetu. And God is a God is a provider. Na Mungu ni mpeanaji wetu. I've gone through several, you know, issues in my life. But I know God is a provider. There was a time I was in Belgium. I had my last born son while I was there. He's, he's a, a God-given child. And I had no money. But God provided miraculously. And from that time, whenever I'm in need, I say, Oh God, please, I know you are a provider. Because God is able. So we believe His word. Now, to be empowered to fulfill your purpose. You have to be. The starting point is salvation. Let's read Romans 10, 9. If, thank you. Let's read together. That if thou shalt confess, confess with your mouth the Lord, Lord Jesus and, and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from, from the dead, dead you shall be saved. If you believe in your heart, you believe. Let, let that verse remain there, please. If you believe, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead. You shall be saved. You and your salvation. That is salvation. You confess with your mouth. You believe in your heart. That God raised Jesus from the dead. And you got saved. Some people when they get saved they feel some things. But uh, some people feel nothing. For me, when I got saved, first I got saved in a Maurice Sorulo meeting in KICC. I was dragged there by a friend. And that friend, that friend, I, I believed I was very good. I believed me to tend madambi, ile madambi dambi. I didn't do those funny and, things. And so I, be, I believed salvation is for bad people. 
committed all the offenses that you can talk of. Naliamini kwamba wokovu wa wale watu wamefanya mambo mabaya ambayo tunaweza ongelelea. So I believed me I was good I didn't need it. So you may be here and you may think you are so good. Unaweza kuwa hapa na unadhania wewe ni mzuri sana. But imagine you are lost if you have not believed in the Lord Jesus. Lakini nikwambie you have to confess with your mouth believe in your heart and you just get saved so when they made the altar call i did not understand it very well but my friend told me just go just go and i went and then they said the sinner's prayer i repeated wakasema maombi ile ya watu wenye dhambi nikarudia you confess kiri you believe amini you get saved okolewa i'm saved up to now na hadi leo nimeokolewa nimeokoka you will know how to you will grant salvation as you walk utajua wokovu unapoendelea i don't even remember what they preached but i just followed the sinner's prayer lakini niliomba lile ombi la toba but i don't even remember that prayer na hata siwezi kumbuka niliomba vipi lakini i spoke it lakini naliisema then i got saved nalipookoka and i have remained saved na nimebaki nikiwa nimeokoka that was 19 78 ilikuwa mwaka wa 1988 aha 88 and i'm still saved now nimeokoka hadi leo that time i had uh, i had two children and i wanted a third child and we were not getting the third child wakati ule nilikuwa nime ni na watoto wawili na nilikuwa ninataka mtoto watatu na sikuwa tunapata sikuwa napata for over seven years miaka saba so when i got saved is when i knew oh you mean children you can pray for them i didn't know before then nilipookoka nikajua ah kumbe mtoto unaweza unaweza omba so when bonke was preaching in nakuru those times we had just radios aha bonke alikuwa anahubiri nakuru wakati wote tulikuwa tuna radio i was listening to the radio nalikuwa nasikiza radio then he said those women who are married and they have no children wale mama wameolewa na hawana watoto we pray for you to have children na waombeeni mpate watoto so i just said me father god i have but i want mimi nikasema baba niko na wawili lakini ninataka so i knelt down as he prayed nikapiga magoti alipokuwa anaomba that was july 88 hiyo ni mwezi wa 7 88 april 89 i had my third born april 89 nilikuwa na mtoto watatu God answers prayer Amen. Mungu anajibu maombi Just believe yani wokoka na waamini na utaendelea Now being filled with the Holy Spirit Kiwa unajazwa na Roho Mtakatifu There was a meeting in uh, Uhuru Park Kulikuwa na mkutano pale Uhuru Park and uh, then they were praying for people to be filled with the holy spirit i didn't even know what it was i just opened my mouth and i started to speak in tongues so just receive jesus okay, yes. so sweet yeah, yes. we, ni, ni tamu sana. he's a good god ni mungu mwema. Father God we thank you for your love. Baba Mungu tunakushukuru kwa upendo wako. Thank you for your word today. Neno lako leo whatever you have planted in our individual hearts. Ila ambacho umepanda ndani ya moyo wetu. We pray that you will grow and bear fruit. Mba kwamba itakuwa na ikaweze kuzaa matunda. We shall walk with you. Na tutatembea na wewe. I just want to ask if you have a need. Kama uko na hitaji, just lift up your hand. Inua tu mkono wako. If you have a need just as we are talking maybe there's a need you'd like the lord to whether you are in the tent or in the overflow i think there are many people ministry team members come in front please just come over i just your hands will pray to the lord I, I, i want the ministry members to be in front and just to start speaking you know 
God answers those prayers. Nataka tu wa huduma kundi la wa huduma mkuu hapa mbele muanze kutangaza. Because the hands are too many so just pray, pray for the people. Waombeni, waombeni. Just pray for them waombeni. that the Lord will meet them at the Wana point of need. Bwana atakutana nao mahitaji yao. Father, we just thank you for your people. Tunakushukuru kwa watu wako Bwana. For the problems that they may be facing. Kwa mambo ambayo wanapitia. We know that you are able to meet all our needs Tuna... according to your riches Kwamba, and glory. Kwamba unakutana na mahitaji kulingana na uwezo wa and we pray that you will meet the need of every person represented here. Omba kila mmoja alioko hapa ukaweza kutana na hitaji lake. You are faithful. Kwa sababu wewe ni mwaminifu. So may you minister your grace to our people. Wao dumie neema yako watu wako. May you walk in our may we walk in healing. Tutembee katika uponyaji. For by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. Kwa sababu kwa kupitia mapigo ya Yesu tulipona. May we walk in abundance. Tutembee kwa utele. Because by the Jesus was made poor that we might become rich. Kwa sababu Yesu alifanyika maskini ili tuwe tajiri. May we walk in acceptance. Tutembee kwa kukubalika because Jesus was rejected that kwa... we be accepted and loved. Kwa sababu alikataliwa Yesu ili tukaweze kupendeka. Oh Father God, may we walk in your glory. Ye yeah, Baba Mungu tutembee katika utukufu wako. Because Jesus Christ took all our shame on the cross. Kwa sababu Yesu akaweza kuchukua aibu zetu msalabani. And for every need that is raised of oh God. Ma- mahitaji yote iliyo Nuliwa hapa leo may you meet it according to your riches in glory in Jesus na utajiri wako katika utukufu may I ask if you are not saved niulize kama uko hapa na haujaokoka just lift your hand hebu inua tu mkono wako Jesus wants to save you anataka so kuokoa just lift your hand kama unataka kuokoka inua mkono wako the lord will save you today atakuokoa bwana leo and you'll start your journey of fulfilling your purpose na utaanza safari yako ya kutimiliza makusudi yako kwa Mungu do you have any hands raised Je, in the tent yote ambaye angependa kuokoka amainua mkono in the tent kwenye hema in the overflow aha katika pale nje mbubujiko up there on the balcony kule juu kwenye balcony panana una kuna, kuna mkono umeinuliwa pale juu kama menua mkono there's a hand raised up pana mkono pale juu let's say uh, just stand up unaweza simama tu simama tu get up get up so that you can pray simama tu tukaweza kuomba na wewe pastor there's somebody there pana mtu pale let's clap for him tukaweza kuwapigia makofi come over just go in front kuja tu hapa mbele kuja tu hapa mbele kwenye yule mtu gachi the lord come in front ukitakumbukia yesu ajo tu hapa mbele you confess with your mouth you believe na kinywa chako na kuamini mwana wako na utaokoka permanent na itakuwa ya kuja kudumu ya kudumu kwa jina la yesu so just come Come and be prayed for. Utaombewa. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. Yesu yuko hapa, Yesu anaponya. God bless us. Mungu awabariki.